Welcome to the Board Game Snobs Podcast. Critically harsh reviews with a touch of class. Thank you, Nigel. I'm Gabby. This is Jerry. Hey, what's up, Jerry? I'm doing good. I didn't ask you. I, I didn't ask if you were doing good. I didn't say how you doing, but okay, go ahead. <laughs> That's when you're just used to the uh, formalities of conversation. Or what? Dude. Hey, Jerry, I'm doing good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you would be worried. I just wanted to throw it out there. <laughs> I have had a lot of issues here lately, and I know you've been worried about me, and I just want to make it clear to okay. all, you and all of our listeners. Glad to hear My you're doing Jerry, well. My name's Jerry, and I'm doing good. No, I'm my, Gobby. My, Gobby. I'm doing medium. He is the uh, he's the Kanye West of board game podcasters. How's that? You just jump in and interrupt people and say, "Hey, <laughs> oh, hey, you, you like know. pandemic?" But a have you heard of reference to five, six years ago? Come on, Jerry. I just now found out about Kanye's that. Kanye's done lots of crazier things since then. I saw it on the YouTube. Okay, but Kanye West. So does that make you Taylor Swift? It does actually. <laughs> I, it, now she the blonde girl you that are does blonde hair. She's, she's she, not blue eyed though. I'm she's the one that does all the the boyfriend left her and she's oh mad, every, right? yeah she's dated a thousand people and they have all broken up with her and they've provided her with billions of dollars. Taylor, let me tell you this right now. Once you've gone through that many, you have to stop and ask yourselves if it might be you. That's <laughs> What's the, the common denominator? What's the common denominator. <laughs> Is it me? No, you know what though. Nobody asks themselves that. I always ask myself that. Do you Is really? it me? And the answer is always uh, yes. the same. Yes, <laughs> no, it it's, no, it's not me. <laughs> it's society as I a whole. I mean, I do, but most people in general don't ask themselves, am I the problem here? You're inflective. What does that mean? You look inward to your innards. Oh, yes, I do. I'm deflective, like deflector shields up. Like Wonder Woman's bracelets. Yeah. I've not watched Wonder Woman. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm Ever? Sorry. Ever. I'm sorry. You don't know I, anything about her. I know she has a lasso that when you you get tied up, you tell the truth, which I'm not sure how that's lasso di- of truth. I don't know how that's different from any rope. <laughs> Every yeah. time I've ever been tied up, I've told the truth. <laughs> I just, just fun fact. Yeah, well, hers. Um, uh, it compels you. How does it compel you? I don't know. How can it compel you? The power of the rope compels you. You ruined my segue. If I have to tell you the, the rope of truth, I don't care I because don't I care. was going to say Gold West. When I talked about Kanye West, and you ruined my segue, so oh, I'm already good. irritated. But I'm tired of hearing the word segue. Oh, you know, three words you overuse. What? Segue. Okay. Convoluted. Convoluted. Mechanic. Mechanic. I won't use segue, convoluted, or mechanic in any of this podcast from here on oh. out. Oh, wow. I doubt that. Well. You know what we haven't talked about in a while, though? What? Kevin Costner. Don't you know bring, why? You know why? why I think about that? Because I rewatched Waterworld yesterday, mm-hmm. and it was good, just as good as the day I remember watching it. The end scene where he's sliding down that zip line, chasing the <sighs> little girl. Although he never has a name, so it's kind of like hard to connect with him. In a movie, you should have a name. I call him Kevin. <laughs> but don't just be. Well, I think they called him Mariner. Mariner. Remember he had webbed toes and gills? He could breathe underwater. I did not remember that fact about him. No, I didn't remember the webbed toes. I knew the gills. He was basically Aquaman, except he couldn't control the fish. Why didn't they just make him Aquaman? Why didn't yeah, they just get it would have been a perfect, That would have been a good segue. Maybe he's, maybe he's Superman's stepdad, but Aquaman's real dad. Superman's stepdad. Yeah, because he was super. Kevin Costner was Superman's oh, stepdad. He got tornadoed The Mariner? Away. Now, yeah. Mariner is a Marvel comic. That is basically Aquaman, hmm. but he's called Submariner. He's called Submariner. So, no, wait, wait. Is there a, a Mariner and then he has a little buddy? That's- <laughs> <laughs> this is Mariner? Submariner? Like Submariner? Mini Me? Mini Me? <laughs> that, R.I.P. That, what? R.I.P. There you go. You could be Pretty Mariner short. and I'll, you get your little buddy called Submariner and he can breathe in the water for you. But did you know that, Did you do you remember Waterworld? Did you watch it when it came out? No. Yeah, I watched the VHS. I, I watched it twice in theaters. I remember that movie wow. very clearly. And it bombed. I was in my late teens, I think. Wow. Uh, it was the most expensive movie up until that time ever made. Until Titanic. Until Titanic. And it bombed tremendously. I remember watching it solely because Dennis Hopper. Dennis Hopper was amazing. Rest in peace. Um, R.I.P. Because um, he played one of the most influential characters 
in the history of film, and that would be Bowser, King Koopa on Super Mario <laughs> Brothers. <laughs> with Although he basically played Dennis Hopper. And then yeah, so in Dennis Hopper movie. was always Dennis Hopper. Yes. And I like the fact that he was King Cooper. Cooper. Koopa. Koopa. And then he was the water world guy with the one eye. Yeah. And then he he like gave Bob Quiz hot shot. Hot shot. He gave Keanu Reeves a hard time. Yeah. And it's like he just did a lot of things. He was always a good bad guy. He was a good bad guy. And I don't know. Somebody saw him but I don't know how he got into show business. I'm pretty sure he was like at a liquor store someday <laughs> and some producer saw him was like, Hey, we need a bad guy, come with us. Just be yourself. <laughs> and he was. Yeah, that's that's from then on. I love Dennis Hopper. Uh, Kevin Costner, I don't think he said more than maybe fifty words that whole movie. He didn't need to. His his actions he speaks spoke volumes. From here, and then pointing to my heart. I did. He did. I'll never uh, forgive you for Postman. Uh, speaking of games, never seen Postman. But wait, there's more. Or there was more. Uh, I okay. Well, before wait, are you going to go into the main topic? I'm going to go into the main topic. Okay, okay, but before you do, okay, I played a game that's all the rage right now. Yes, Azul. Oh. And that means blue. I did not know that. I think. And I am half Chilean, and I feel quite bad about that. Is Azul Chilean? It's Spanish for blue. Is it? That's what you just said, right? I don't know if it's Spanish. It's Spanish. Azul? Yes. I don't know. I'm not Espanol. <laughs> well, I am. I thought Lorenzo El Magnifico meant Lenny the Magnificent because you told me that. <laughs> That's Italian. You're not Italian? No. I'm just a heavy set, dark haired man. Email Giuseppe and see what <laughs> Giuseppe. I bet he's Italian. Yeah, I like that name. Giuseppe. No, uh, I'm sorry, Giuseppe. I shouldn't have done that. You probably get that all the time. I don't like it when there's like a clear oh, there's like a clear cut joke that everybody makes in movies. And then like it's so cliche, but then they go ahead and make it. Mm-hmm. Like an Italian accent. I shouldn't have done that. We were just talking about Mario Brothers. I know. That's true. I didn't do it then. I stopped myself. But I did it with Giuseppe. Mario's Italian. Mario is Italian. Mm -hmm. And Luigi. And Luigi. Very Italian. But I played Azul. And my verdict is, it's fine. That's it? It's like nominated for the spiel. This is my problem. I don't know what your problem is. (laughs) This is one of my problems. (laughs) When you have a game, like literally, it's constantly posted. People yeah. playing it. Blowing Lots it up. of people are Blowing playing it. it up. It's Tom did his... Uh, Who's Tom? Uh, off the Dice Tower. Who? It's a, it's a podcast Never about board them. games. Never heard of them. Uh, well, they're kind of well-known in the board game community. Mm. I have to look them up. Check them out. Are they on the Dice Tower? Oh, okay. uh, you were saying? <laughs> Let's plug the Dice Tower. Because they need it. Uh, he was talking about the... He does a, a top-selling games every month mm-hmm. from Cool Stuff. Which is his sponsor. One of the people that sponsor him. Um, and Azul, has, I think he said, has been number one in both units moved and dollars for the past at least three months, I think. Really? So it's a mega game. Tons of people are buying it. And it is fine. It's an enjoyable game. It's abstract completely. You're oh. laying tile. I do prefer it to Sagrada. Which I strangely enjoyed. You like Sagrada? Sagrada, I enjoy too. But I just, it's abstract and I, it's a puzzle to me and it was fine. We need to preference this that we don't like abstracts as a, as a whole. Not that I require tons of theme. I'm a Euro guy. Mm, we're dry. <laughs> but I, it just didn't do much for me. That and Decrypto, you got on the shelf, are two games I want to play. I want to play Decrypto. It's all the rage right now, All right, too. let's get it it's done. It's the new code Let's names. go to our list. These are the games that wowed me. And when I say wowed me, wow. Wow. That's three Olin Wilsons. Wow. Oh, we should have had that drop. No. I need a machine like the DJs have. That just drops <laughs> Olin Wilsons. That just have all the drops. Wow. You'd be like the Kramer wow. guy, the stock guy. <laughs> That's what you'll turn into. I need that in the, uh, oh, good for you. These that are, was a... Uh, the guy from Terminator, Christian Bale. Christian Bale. You remember that? Yep. I remember Christian Bale. I remember when he was Batman. Okay, go ahead. These are five games that wowed me the first time I played them. I can, cont- But here's my 
here's the word that was introduced to us by the Dice Tower, the caveat. Here's the caveat to that. Okay. Uh, these are games that still I like. They can't be games that I fell in love with immediately and then they got fettered out. They got murdered. These are games that I played once, was blown away, and to this day I am obsessed with them. So my segue got ruined by Kanye West because I was going to mention Gold West. Gold West, which was made by TMG Games, came out several years ago by Mr. J. Alex Cavern. Is that how you say his name? Yes. I have never heard of him. I don't know what else that he makes in terms of a designer. I was going to actually look him up to have a little bit more info and see. What we don't he, look stuff up. We don't look stuff up. Gold West got some. If it's not off the top of our head, it doesn't get uh, said. There you go. Gold West got some pull because, oh, uh, Z Garcia of the Dice Tower fame liked it, talked about it. I don't think many people bought it, and it's actually kind of hard to come by. Gold West is an awesome Euro game. It has area control. It's got tracks, but not too many tracks. It's got decent components. It's got a modular board. And it does a Moncala. I don't like Moncalas. He did Sentient. Really? Mm-hmm. Good for him. Yeah. So he's legit. He's done World's Fair, 1893. What? 2018 Prowler's Passage by Renegade Games. Wow. Uh, Easy Breezy Travel Agency. Don't know that one. Doxu. Don't know that one. Atlas Enchanted Lands. Don't know that one. Okay. Well, then he's done Gold West Sentient and... 1893. So he's got he's a legit, he's a legit designer. Apparently well, so. so far from what I've played, Gold West is his best game. And question, it, yeah, is he too legit to quit? <laughs> yes. Uh no. I will tell you who could quit right now. Who's that? Uh oh, uh, Uwe Rosenberg. Oh, shots fired. He could he could quit. He's the, he's got his games out there. He's got his lovers. He's got his haters. He's legit. He can quit. There's sure. some people that haven't gotten proven themselves. Like Stone Meyer, you got to keep going. He's got to. Uh, oh, uh, Red Raven Games. What's his name? Uh, Lockett. Ryan Lockett. Ryan, you're not legit yet. You can't quit. Uh, Mr. J. Alex Kevern. Kevern. Mm, I think he could make a couple more. Got to make a couple more. I'm just going to tell you right now, Gold West was one of the finest Euro games. It's probably my top five Euro games. I love Gold West. Is it worker placement or no, area control? Work, it's area control. Area control. It's yeah. area control with the Moncala. I despise Moncalas. But this is excellent to where you put, you get victory points for where you put, you're putting resources in your little gold chute and then they move down. You pick them up and then leave something behind in each one until everything that gets pushed off, that's what you got to use to build your little tents in your cities and move up on these tracks. Very basic game. Excellent rule book. Couldn't ha- speak more highly of Gold West, one of my favorite Euros of all are time. You, so are you going through this in a order? That, that, that is my order. Number five, first time I ever played Gold West. I love it. Okay, I so still we're starting at five? I'm starting at five. That is to you, sir. Okay. Well, then I need to uh, do mine. Um, <laughs> I did not rate mine. All right, just go. Honorable mentions. I know which one they're about. I honorable mentions. honorable mentions. How dare you? Everybody gets a trophy. Okay, fine, fine. You don't want it, you don't, don't get it. Right. Let me do my number one is that, number two is that, number three is that, number four, and number five. Okay, this is it. Okay, good. I found, honorable mention, Raiders North Sea, I found <laughs> that in making this game, in making this list, most of my games that wow me, like I'm like just blown away, it's so fun, it's so interesting, Kind of were like social. Yeah. Because you're a social guy. Like I had coup on my list. Or not social, but like involved lots of interaction. Right, right. Coup, Lords of Vegas, honorable mention. Let's see, look there. Squeezing them in. Just, anyway. just, just get to it. Uh, but my number five would have to be along the same lines, Skull. <sighs> the first time I played this, a game of coasters. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. I was just like, this game is so simple. Condensation is coming. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was really good. I got to write that down. I was writing that down. <laughs> oh, classic. Classic. How do you spell condensation? All right, go ahead. C O N. Um, It was a game. It, it was just so simple. I read the rules. I'm like, this is it. I'm like, I don't see how this is going to work. Broke it out. Played it. And every time we play it, we play at least five games. It's just bam, bam, bam. Everybody likes it. Everybody enjoys it. 
It's a bluffing game. It's like poker. It's like Russian roulette. It's just, and it's still good. It's still a good, solid game. Number five, Skull. I'm still laughing about a game with coasters. Uh, this game you bought, I made fun of you for buying it because you bought it during the hype. I played it one time after it's sitting on your shelf for quite some time, and I lost my mind about it and then proceeded to play it and play it and still love it. Lorenzo El Magnifico. Oh. I cannot describe to you how that melted my brain, its simplicity. It has... The one thing I do worry about it is that there's not that many cards, so there's not that much variety. But again, this is a Euro. This is a good Euro. I think it's a few months ago on one of our podcasts, I think I declared it as like probably my favorite. It's like favorite Euro. Yeah. It's pro- yeah. Yes, you did. It's right next to Concordia. When I look up at our shelves, it's right there. It's right there. El- I, ha- I know. I noticed I ha- this is my side that we have not played. We have 16 games we have not played. The next shelf over, these are all the games that are like our top games. Yeah, I've seen that. I noticed that, and I love Lorenzo. And I, I just cannot tell you, every time I think about it, I want to play it again. I wish it had a solo variant. I wish it had something. It was one of those games that... <sighs> it's got an expansion now. It's got an expansion. That you said you weren't crazy about. I wasn't crazy. I haven't played the expansion, but from what I've read about it, I just don't like it. Um, but I'll, gi- I'll give it a shot. Lorenzo El Magnifico. It's a worker placement twists with sort of a dice placement you roll dice to determine the value of your certain workers you have limited workers you can't there's restrictions everywhere you can't put this worker here you can't put this worker there it's engine building it is just you are no matter how many players we're playing with it is always up in your face everybody's always in your way i love it that's a solid game number four lorenzo il magnifico that means the good my number four i think it's italian my number four is a game that has come recent to our collection that we have played nearly every time since we discovered it. It's in our top, top, top of every list. It blew me away the first time I played it. I actually won the first time I played it. That always helps. Yeah. I almost won this last time we played it. Oh, I thought I did. Yeah. You snuck in the last minute. Oh, oh, uh, yes. Barony once again makes the list. Barony. If you haven't figured this out by now, <laughs> if you've listened to this podcast... You should buy we, Barony. We play three games. <laughs> we, we, we play Barony an awful lot because Barony to me is a it's a chess game. It's a chess game with four people, and it's very simple. It's just it's it's so simple, and that's what blows my mind every time. And I say this every time we talk about this game, and people are probably, uh, Giuseppe, Joe, <laughs> Frank, Captain Croc, and uh, Geoff. Geoff, I forget Geoff. Uh, it's just Jeff though. He spells it correctly. Um, we're probably sick of hearing us talk about it, but. Barony blew me away. Uh, on Instagram, I noticed Giuseppe has played Barony. Mm. So appreciate that. He's in with us. If you have not played it, at least check it out somewhere. Speaking of games, that was your number four? Number four. Number five, Skull. Number four, Barony. My number three, and speaking of simple, bought this game because of old Mr. drive Through Review, who I never watch anymore. I used to watch him quite often. Uh, Joel Eddie. In his black and white days? In his black and white days. He got <laughs> some color in him. He got, he, got out, he got some sun. Uh, he, did, uh, he mentioned this game one time. I bought it and never played it. Left it on the shelf. Brought it over one day, and we played it, and we instantly fell in love with it. The king is dead. Oh, yes. Nothing but a cubes, a few cards on the board. The King is Dead is just as about as simple as you can get in a he- and, and still have a game be so thought-provoking. You know what? Eight eight cards, eight moves. I actually kind of forgot about that one. Yeah, I know. I would have put it on my list, I but I didn't. On you. Honorable so, mention. Honorable. <sighs> You're number three, sir. But that is, I agree 100%. The first time I played that, I was like, this game is bending my brain, and I love it. Yep. It's good. It's good. Two my players. number three. Will have to be X Wing, the miniatures oh, game. Oh, yes. I forgot about that. I had seen it. I've seen it talked about. Jerry told me he had all the stuff. He brought it over. It's it's a bit tedious to carry all the stuff, to set it up, to get the cards set out, to get the plane set out, planes, minis, whatever they are. But it's good. But once it's set up and ready to go, I've love that game i remember i remember you playing it's the, so exciting you being the millennium falcon and just driving around that was just it you just that you were just pleased it's yeah. just pushing this around shooting at stuff i mean that's part of it just the tactile feel yeah. of the game just pushing those minis around 
But rolling them dice, it's exciting, but it has stuff that can counteract the dice, moves you can make. It does have strategy to it. I love my phantoms. And you just, it, it just blew me away. It was fun throwing dice, fighting a dog fight in space at Star Wars. What's not to love? So much. I bought Armada. I bought Armada. I haven't played it. But now that uh, I just know now that I have my, my own custom card where I just jump the light speed and just blow you up. Sacrifice An Armada? One. Yeah. No. I'm just going to jump the light speed and go no. through all your shit oh. and just blow them up. I see what you did. see what you did. see what you did there? I see what you did. Pop culture. I see Pop what culture. I'm all about it. I got my pulse on what okay, the kids are watching. So that was number day. three for me. Okay. Number two. Played this game solo the first time. It. I bought this game because I do not like the designer. Not personally, but his games. Oh, Every one of his games I played, mm. I did not enjoy. Oh, they were fine. Some of them I didn't quite. I, mm. it, it, I was getting back into the hobby. Heard his name all the time. Mm. Bought every one of his games just about. Never could quite find one that I just I bought them and sold them. Uwe. Uwe. Gates of Lo Yang. Gates of Lo Yang, yet again. Thank you. Love Gates of Lo Yang. He, to me, Uwe Rosenberg, every I bought and sold, La Havre. Havre. Oh, oh, Havre. Whatever that's called, because I get tired thinking about The it. Harbor? The Harbor. Isn't that what it is in English? Yeah. It, it's Le no. Havre. No, it's... Uh, is it, he sp- French? It, no, it's Spanish for... Oh, it's Spanish? I'm Spanish. I should know. It's not... That's not Spanish. It's, that's French. It's French. <laughs> is it really? It's it's French. <laughs> La Havre is the second largest port in France. Really? Yeah, look that up. Port. So it stands for the port. It I stands got you. for the harbor. Oh, okay. Whatever. Uh, whatever. The boat is coming. Uh, Le whatever. Gates of the Little Yang is a great solo game, but it is one of the best. And Titus. In the uh, corn series? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Titus. Uh, Euro games out there. Love. Get it right. Get it tight. As Bubba Sparks once said. <laughs> And I'll pause adequately enough time for you to cut that later. (laughs) And uh, Uh, your number two. If no one else enjoys our podcast, I do. (laughs) Number two. Oh, number two. Number two, you may may have issues with me. I already do. Well, you can add this to the list. But it is a legit game. It is a social game. And I had heard about it from my brother-in-law. I was concerned about it, but we played it, and it blew my mind. And every time, it is one of the most, I've had the most intense, some of the most intense experiences with this game, Mafia. (sighs) You get the right crowd of people, or or, uh, they play it as Werewolf, but we play the Mafia version. You get the right, right, right set of people. You get the right people. I mean, it's just, if you have the right setting, sometimes it can fall flat. It will fall flat every once in a while. But I have yet to play a game that has fallen flat. I've heard stories it does. But the first time we played it, I was blown away. It's intense. There's one game I remember, several games, but there's one game clearly I remember to this day. I was the last villager left. There were two other people left. The vote was down to me. And they were both telling me it was the other person. <laughs> I did not know who to believe. It was just, it was mind blowing. What happened? Uh, I chose correctly. <laughs> I chose correctly. You chose wisely. It was sheer chance that I did it, but I love trying to read people. Everybody plays it different. You have some people that are super quiet all the time. And when they play it, they're the hardest to read. But like me, you, Bubba, mm-hmm. we tend to be the talkers. Yeah. So we talk, people think we're guilty. We don't talk. People think we're guilty. It's just one of them games. I love playing Mafia. It's not a, necessarily a board game, but it's a social game, and it gets played at conventions, and I love it. Speaking at conventions last year at BGG, I played Werewolf and Two Rooms of a Boom bow all night and loved them. And I had one of the greatest, well, probably one of the funnest experiences playing uh, playing Werewolf or Mafia. I can't remember. I get them confused all the time which one I was playing. With uh, a group of people I did not know. Two Rooms and a Boom was the one you played most. I, yeah, I played it the most, but I did get into a... Uh, I got into a oh, really? and a Mafia one. 
people I did not know had no idea how to how to read them, and that was the one where the little girl sitting next to me, as a little girl, she's probably 18, Oh, 19, yeah, I do remember you talking about that. And I said, I said, I think you're the werewolf. <laughs> and she, she says, no, I'm not the werewolf. And I said, no, you've been acting weird. You've been really quiet. And then she tears up and actually starts crying and says, <laughs> That's right. and says my grandfather just had a heart attack. And I went to see him. That's where I've been all day. And so I just came back, and I'm really worried about him. And I looked at her, and I realized, shh, shh, shh. I didn't believe her. And so I stood up and said, she's lying. This stuff has no grandfather. I was immediately lynched. Wow. Because I attacked some little girl who, at the end, turned out to be the werewolf. And, and That's I, almost like that psychopathic. Was, and I, and I, I, afterwards, I congratulated her. I said, that was amazing. Wow. That was, she, she cried was on great. command she and talked to and she killed command. her grandfather for the I know. Guy. She said, my, my grandfather's just fine. And she, I just, I just love that. I love that about wow. her. I just I don't even remember her name and thought that was awesome. That was a great, that was a great experience. Uh, That's my, impressive. My number one's Barony. Oh, yeah. Beat you to the punch. It beat me to the punch. We bought, we played Barony. It's been on our wish list forever. We played it at BGG. We sat down. We played one game of it. We played some of the rules even wrong. We got up to set it back up. I was looking up the rules, and while I was doing so, Goppy ordered it on Amazon. <laughs> we played it again. We got back home. It come in the mail. We played it again. We played it again. We still play it. Barony's one of the best games that's been made within the past 10 years. That's all I'm going to say about it. It's incredible. You're number one. My number one. You're not going to approve of. Okay. But this is a list that wowed us. And we still like them. And I still like it. Okay. Go ahead. So not like Settlers of Catan, okay. which blew my mind. And then you got bored Introduced with it. me that's, to the hobby. That's why I put that caveat I've, in there. I've advanced beyond it. Yeah. Um, letters from Whitechapel. Oh. It's hide and seek on a board. I get it. But not only the first time I played it, but every time I play that game, it just... Ha- it, well, it's like Mafia. It has... I like a game that has me tense. And that doesn't make any sense because I don't like horror movies, yeah. but I do like, I, I'm nervous. I'm wanting to catch Jack. I'm searching. I'm searching. It just, it, it blew me away the first time I played it. I was, I had up until that moment, I had never been that excited, literally standing up, wondering, trying to figure out all the steps and where Jack had went on the board. It, I, it just it blew me away. Number one, letters from Whitechapel. Every time we play the game, Gobby puts on the Sherlock music, Sherlock Holmes, either BBC or the or the or the Robert Downey. Well, Jr. you like the BBC. I like the BBC. He likes Robert Downey Jr. He's wrong. Music wise, and anybody who likes Elemental can just get out. Elementary, whatever. I don't even remember it. I've not <laughs> watched one. End. I have not no. watched one episode of it. And we had a whole Lucy Lou discussion about it. Yeah, remember? you know how I feel about Lucy Her Lou. Her and Bill Murray, best uh, friends. Uh. Letters from Whitechapel is one of those games that uh, always end up being Jack. And the last time... You know why? Because you don't like to work with a group. I don't like to work with a group. You like to be the guy. I like to go shining my flashlight down the alleys that I think Jack might be at where everyone else is wrong. This last game, I got to literally (laughs) one more move and I'd won the game. One more turn and I move into my hideout and the game is over. And Enrique happened to be standing in my way. And I did not get back to my hideout. And I guess the sun come up and everybody saw me running around. Hey, there he is. There he is. <laughs> so Letters from Whitechapel is one of those games that people either, it's polarizing because they either love it. You either to, like that style or you don't. Or they despise it. I have had bad experiences because I have provided bad experiences with Letters from Whitechapel. No, the been, last one was good. The last one was probably awesome. The most fun I've had with it. But like the first few times I was Jack, I like got caught. I'm I'm bad at it. And then you have gotten caught every single every time. Single time. <laughs> and then times when I'm the cop, it's like I'm not every. I'm I've always, never played you with the cop. I have been the cop one time, and it always ends up I'm with other people. I'm with the Keystone cops, and they're all like, <laughs> "We should be over <laughs> here." <laughs> I'm more like Dirty Harry. I like to show up and say, "Do you do lots of arresting, or do you clue?" I clue until I know, mm. and then I don't need to get a clue. Well, well. Those are the games that blew us away. There are some honorable mentions that I won't mention. Well, well, well. okay. So what? But to, for, hold on. For instance, yes. Take your. I wanted. I, I had a hard time making this distinction, but not really. But I was like, well, I mean, my number one games, uh, video culture scythe, which has changed now. The first times I played them, I was blown away. 
but not like blown. Like I was like, oh, these are excellent games, but they didn't thrill. They didn't give me they a thrill. thrill. That that was what I went for. For for instance, I firmly remember. All right, here's a game that thrilled me to death the first time we played it was Star Wars Rebellion. I remember you getting up from the table and running around. I did, but. After that, we never really played it that much. So it was like a game that has to be like locked down to this day. I get that feeling. I get that same high. Yeah. Every time I play Gacy Lo Yang, Lorenzo, uh, King is Dead, Gold, Gold West, all these ones, every time I play them, I get that same feeling. They have never waned on me. They have never gone down. Some of these go up and some of them go down. Eclipse was really good. Eclipse has gone back and forth with me. I've enjoyed it, gone up and down. Same thing with Scythe, same thing with several others. But these games were amazing the first time, and they're good ones as they ever were. Like Photosynthesis, I played it. I fell in instant love with it. I've played it since then. It's kind of gotten a little too long it's, for me. It's hard to get it to the table because of the type of game it is. But Okay, well, that's it. That's it. Uh, our next episode will be about what I did at BGG. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I guess it'll be all you. It'll be all me. You can ask me questions. <laughs> I'll ask you, you questions. You can interview me. So what was really? the best? I'll send you some questions I need you to ask. Okay. Like, That's a good question, Gobby. What was the best? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, play lots of games so you can talk about it. I will. Find Lignum. I will. And play it. That's a uh, French, isn't it? Uh, don't ask me. It's about oh. chopping wood. Oh, Go wood find up. that game and play it. All right. Gotcha. All right. Well, everybody, I'm Gobby. I'm Jerry. We'll see you next time. Condensation is coming. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Board Game Snobs. Stay classy.